Happy holidays, everybody. Mike with Mike W Consulting here. And if you are a web designer, web developer, freelancer, or a newly developed startup looking for a great IDE to use, stay tuned. And I'm going to show you what I use and what I have been using for over a year now and absolutely love it. So here we are on Code Anywhere's main website. Now, if you didn't guess already, Code Anywhere is the browser-based IDE that I was talking about. And I absolutely love this thing. Now, there's a bunch out there. There's, there's Code Anywhere, there's Cloud9, um, there's just a lot out there. There's even some you can host yourself, which I've tried. Um, for what I do, I personally love Code Anywhere. And I'm going to show you some of the features that I really like about Code Anywhere. So we're here on their main page, and you can see it's a pretty um, modern type of UI. It's a, uh, for the most part, kind of a single page, um, kind of a single page layout where you can kind of scroll down through everything. Now to show you some of the great features I love about Code Anywhere, I'm actually going to log into my Code Anywhere account and kind of show you one of the projects that I've been working on. But let's look at their main site first and see some of the features that they have available. So the first thing that you'll notice is they have a free account. Who doesn't love a free account? They can also connect with Google+, they can uh, Bitbucket, uh, Git, and Facebook. But what we're going to do now is we're going to look at their features. And some of their features that I absolutely love is the editor. The editor is just, it's like what you'd expect from almost any other IDE. It has code completion for you. It helps with your syntax. Obviously color coding to help you break down and make sure you can see everything properly. It supports JavaScript, PHP, HTML, ASP. It supports a lot. As they clearly state here, they support 72 other languages um, to help you with your coding. It is very, as they say here, robust and flexible. There's a lot you can do with it. You can personalize it and you code the way that you want. Now let's look at, so the terminal they give you, actually you can have terminal access to some of these, but the one I wanna, po I wanna focus on is collaboration. You can share your code out. So if you have code that you're working on, you can actually share your code out with other developers. If you wanna work, if you're doing a collaboration project with another developer, you can actually share your code to them and you two can work on it in real time. So it's kind of, as they call it, Google Docs style, where I can sit there and make a modification on my code and the developer I'm sharing it with can see the modification in real time that I'm making. If he makes a change, then I can see the change that, that he's making. And that makes for a great environment, a great collaboration environment, especially if you're a new startup company with just a couple of developers. It really will help streamline the process as opposed to, hey, I'm going to make this change and then I'm going to send it or I'm going to do a push to GitHub and then he's got to do a pull from GitHub to, to see the new code. This can all be done in real time, which is just awesome. One of the other points I want to focus on is revisions. So they keep, let's go back to this first one, they keep every version of every file that you save. So you can always revert back to a previous version. If there's something wrong with what you've done or an, a feature's been added that's caused you know, regression, you can always kind of roll back to a previous state. Awesome, a lot of browser IDs don't actually offer this for you. And we're gonna go with connections. This is another piece that I absolutely love about Code Anywhere is they can connect to almost anything. Um, I actually use Code Anywhere connected directly to my website when I work on my website via an FTP connection. So when I pull a file, I download the file, I make the changes I want, and then I push the file back up. It's not the best practice all the time, but it's the way that works the best for me. It's the way I've been doing it for years. And having a in-browser editor like this just really kind of speaks to me and allows me to work from pretty much anywhere, whether I want to work from my desktop, my laptop, my Chromebook, someone else's computer, I can work from pretty much anywhere I want. Which brings me to the next feature, and that is apps. So they actually have an app that you can use for Code Anywhere for any major platform. So we have a web app, which is just simply what I'm gonna show you, and it's the free um, web IDE editor. They have an Android app, where you can actually pull the code up and make changes to the code on your Android phone or Android tablet. 
And same thing with iOS. If you have an iPhone or if you have an iPad, you can download the Code Anywhere app and you can actually run it on there as well. So you can make changes to your code kind of in real time no matter where you're at. If you're The, the example that they use really is you're at a lunch meeting with somebody and you get a fr frantic call saying, hey, this is broken. You can pull the code up on your on your app and you can actually make the change and publish it. So with all that being said, I want to hop into one more thing with the features and something that they call containers. Now the one great thing that I love about this and about the containers is it really helps you know, new companies, startup companies, freelancers to do development without having to purchase stuff. Now I have my own server in my basement that you know, I can put any, devir any environment that I want on it and develop against it. But for people who don't necessarily have that or people who are just starting out, this is a great option. Basically what you can do is you can set up any sort of environment that you want to code against. And it's all in the cloud. You don't actually have to host anything. Now, Code Anywhere will keep it turned off if you haven't used it in a while, but it's pretty simple. If you're just using it for development, you just turn it back on and do what you need to do. And I love this about them. They can, you know, throw up some JavaScript, some HTML5, PHP, Python, Ruby. There's a lot they can do, and we're going to walk through that here very quickly. So now that I've kind of gone through some of the features, uh, I want to just take a quick peek at the pricing because the pricing is incredibly reasonable. I'm very shocked at how reasonable this pricing is, and it hasn't fluctuated very much. Um, so there's obviously the free account, and the free account is great. You can do pretty much whatever you want with the free account. Uh, to a degree, you can't have any always-on containers. Um, you can have a bunch of you can have a container or two, but you can't have any always-on. And you can only connect to one, you know, kind of outside source, whether it be Google Drive, FTP. You can only connect to one of those. But then they have these different ones, which are great. And the starter and freelancers are the ones that I would recommend for people starting out. If you're a one-person kind of freelancer or a one-person startup, then those would probably be the ones best suited for you. If you're past that point and you have more than, say, two developers, then it probably makes sense for you to go ahead and do the professional one with the collaboration. And this works out great. And you have, like I said, the, some of the key points to this one are you can connect to unlimited FTP servers and you can manage multiple users. Um, that's really where this professional and business accounts kind of come into play is when you're buying this kind of for your company for all your developers. All right, so enough of that. Let's just hop right into the IDE. And I love this IDE. And you can see over here on the left that I've got, I'm actually connected to my website here. And this is through FTP. And you can see I just have a couple of PHP files open that, you know, just for demonstration purposes. And then I have a style sheet open, again, just for demonstration purposes. So you can see the color and you can see kind of the autocorrect. So if I wanted to say, you know, under this header, if I wanted to add a background, you can see I get the autocomplete, which is huge when you're developing, especially if you're a freelancer kind of doing this on the side and your day-to-day -day job is not actually, you know, developing. This is great because I never remember all of these all of these difference. I'm getting better about it, but I never remember all of these different attributes and stuff for, for style sheets. So it's great to have this autocomplete so I can just start typing and then know what I need. So the other thing, like I said, I really wanted to point out was the containers. And you can see here that we're under default and we can create new product projects and we can share projects and we can do new connections, stuff like that. But what I want to do is I want to do a new project. And when I choose a new project, I can just choose whatever I want. We're going to choose this. It's going to be blah. Blah. And now we're on the connection wizard here. And this is where I can connect to other things. So if I wanted, you know, I could connect to GitHub. I connect to Bitbucket. I could connect to Git from a URL so I could pull on someone else's code. I could put in my FTP information, connect to another FTP server, SSH, Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon, Cloud. You get the point. There's a lot of stuff here that we can do. Or we can do a container. Containers are great because this is where they're going to host for me what I want to do. So I'm gonna, I want to do a, let's say I want to do a, um, what's one down here that I want to do? 
Python, C, HTML, WordPress, Laravel, Mean, and you can just see how many they have. You know, Ember JS, IO JS, Backbone JS, Angular JS, Cake PHP, Drupal, Loopback, Swift, and there's just there's tons. Um, I'm going to do oh let's just do WordPress. What the heck? So we're just going to do WordPress. I'm going to give it a name of WP Test. And we're gonna do WordPress, and we're gonna do it on. Let's do it on CentOS because I'm more familiar with CentOS. And we're gonna click Create. And now this is gonna go through a couple of things here, trying to create my um, my container within this project. Now I could have created a container within a new project or within a my existing project, which is the default. But I went ahead and created this new project called Blog, just so you can see the separation that we have here. So now it's building. You can see it's spinning up here in the top left, and ha, my 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 container has been created. So you can see right away, which is just great. Um, if you want to select text with the mouse, copy into the clipboard. Uh, Okie dokie. So you can see right away that it's now pulling up this. It's giving me this WP test um, file that I don't see over on the left, but it's here. Um, and it's telling me what I have. So it's a PHP development stack with WordPress 421, Apache, PHP, MySQL. It's a WordPress user, is the user without a password. And my PHP or PHP my admin and composer pre installed. And you can see what we're going to get here. We're getting a basically a virtual machine with two gigs of storage space. It's fine for development. 256 megs of RAM, which again, fine for development sudo access so I can actually log into the terminal SSH terminal listening on port 22770 and access to all HTTP and WebSocket ports and it's telling me the operating system is CentOS 64-bit um, and the access the application running on the container use the following link those ports so this is great so I now have just basically virtually in the cloud built me a a WordPress site that I can now develop against and test against and then save my code off for later use so I hope you guys are kind of seeing my excitement here in in this in this application it's a great great application um, that they they've done a great job and they're continuing to to build upon this application and work at it and they are really focused around their customers I've tweeted out a couple of things and kind of tagged them in it and they've actually been pretty quick to respond to me um, even if it wasn't a question if it was just a hey guys thanks for adding this feature they're pretty quick to respond to me on this so I hope this video has been helpful for you guys this code anywhere kind of quick review and again you can see my excitement on this that I think it's a great program it's a great web app for any developer designer freelance designer developer startup company it just it really cuts down on a lot of the cost that you need to do that initial startup um, it cuts down on even to need to host your own servers and stuff which is great because you know not everyone has the luxury that of being able to have a server that they can host stuff on or or even understanding the back end. A lot of developers and designers don't even know how to install CentOS or set up Apache and MySQL. So I hope this has been informative for you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like to let me know if you want me to do more of these types of reviews. And hop on over to Code Anywhere. At the very least, get yourself a free account. And happy holidays, and I'll catch you guys later.